Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Dr. Rob is going to be looking at specialised cells for your GCSE biology. Now, we know the structure of a cell, or if you don't, go and watch the, the other videos we've done on the structure of animal, plant and bacterial cells. But this is how those structures are slightly changed, how they are specialised, how cells can be specialised towards their function. Specialised cells and differentiation. All multicellular eukaryotic organisms start off as a single undifferentiated cell, so the fertilised egg cell, and then this then starts to divide by mitosis to form a ball of stem cells. These cells are undifferentiated. So these stem cells then start to differentiate into all the different types of cells you need in the body to make up all your different tissues and organs. We say a cell is differentiated when it's undergone physical changes to become specialised to perform a specific function. They can change their shape, their size, and the number of subcellular structures that you can find inside. So if you look at all the different cells there, we've got bone cells, they're obviously going to be made of specific material. We've got red blood cells, and we know that they have special adaptations. Nerve cells are really long and thin, and they have all these branches. We have white blood cells, and then we have muscle cells, and we have epithelial cells that line your small intestine, and they have those little projections, the microvilli that we talked about. So all of these cells look very different, and they have very different functions, and so they are all specialised cells. Let's take a muscle cell as an example here. It's got a lot of mitochondria to release the energy it needs for it to contract. So it has the ability to contract, that means it can elongate and then shorten. And it also has lots of mitochondria, which means that it had more mitochondria than a standard cell. So the number of mitochondria would have been increased as part of the process for it becoming specialised. So the change or the difference is that it has a lot of mitochondria and it needs that lot of mitochondria to carry out its function, which is to contract. So you can see here how all the different cells in your body change from stem cells to specialised cells through the process of differentiation. So we're going to look at some different examples of specialised cells that we need to know from both animals and plants. So we're going to start with erythrocytes, otherwise known as red blood cells. Their function is to carry oxygen from the lungs to respiring cells. So that's their function. So they're specialised to carry that function out by having no nucleus, which is very unique, and they're one of the only animal cells to have no nucleus. This is to make more space for haemoglobin, which is a protein that binds to oxygen, which allows it to carry it and transport it around the body. They also have this special biconcave shape, which means they have this little dip in the middle, either side of the cell. Kind of like a donut, but with no hole. This gives them a high surface area, and we know that increasing the surface area is good for increasing the rate of diffusion, so that helps substances such as oxygen to diffuse into and out of the cell really quickly. Next up, we have a sperm cell. Firstly, in the very tip of the head of the sperm cell, we have something called an acrosome. This contains enzymes that help to digest the outside layers of the egg to help the sperm to actually reach the nucleus of the egg cell. It has a large nucleus inside the head, which obviously contains the DNA that it needs to fuse with the nucleus of the egg cell to form a new fertilised egg cell. It also has many mitochondria in that top part of the tail. This allows it to release energy that it needs to move the tail. And it has a tail, which we obviously can see, and we need that tail to move in order for it to be able to swim to fertilise the egg cell. And all of these help it to carry out its specialised function, which is to fertilise the egg cell and create a new embryo. So the last cell we're going to look at for the animal cells is the nerve cell, or a neuron. The function of the cell is that it's to carry electrical impulses around the body, and it's obviously part of the nervous system. It has lots of branched endings called dendrites. This allows it to make lots of connections with the other nerve cells so they can pass electrical impulses from one cell to another. It has the long central part known as the axon and this allows it to carry impulses over long distances. It 
also has something called the myelin sheath, which is kind of like a fatty layer around the outside of the cell or the axon, and it allows it to increase the speed of how fast those impulses are traveling. We also need to know some examples of specialized plant cells. The palisade cells in the leaf are adapted for photosynthesis. So that means they're adapted to be able to absorb as much light as possible in order to carry out photosynthesis. They're long and cylindrical in shape, so we can pack them all really closely together so you can fit more of those cells next to each other in this tissue layer. They also have lots of chloroplasts in order to absorb more light energy to carry out photosynthesis. So they've got more chloroplasts than a normal plant cell. This is how they are specialised. Guard cells. These are found either side of the stomatal pores. The function of the guard cells is to control the opening and closing of the stomata. So that means they play a role in gas exchange, but also in transpiration or loss of water through the plant. They don't carry out photosynthesis, but they do contain chloroplasts. And there's a reason for that, it's because obviously throughout the day, so it's the different times of the day, and that's sensed through changes in light intensity, is what controls the opening and closing of stomata. We have the root hair cell. The function of the root hair cell is to absorb water and mineral ions from the soil. They're specialised to do this with their special shape, really long elongated shape, which gives them a large surface area. We know that's obviously going to help speed up the rate of diffusion and osmosis to make sure we get as much absorption of those water and mineral ions as possible. They also have a large vacuole which helps with controlling water absorption. And they have lots of mitochondria to provide energy they need for active transport of the mineral ions. The last two specialised plant cells are joined together to form specialised tissues which are used to transport substances around plants. Xylem vessels are made of specialised cells that are joined end to end. They have no cytoplasm, this is to allow the ease of the flow of the water so it can be a continuous column moving up through the tube. Their function is therefore to transport water and mineral ions in the plants, so they need to be this hollow tube to allow that flow of water up from the roots to the leaves. Because these cells are actually dead, and so they're not alive, they're not carrying out any functions, they have, instead of a cellulose cell wall, a cell wall that's been strengthened with lignin, a kind of woody substance, kind of like bark, and it forms in spirals, which allows flexibility because these tubes run through the centre of the plant. So as well as helping to transport substances, it also gives the plant some support and strength. The phloem is made of specialised cells that have end walls with perforations in them. These are known as sieve plates. Again, the cells are joined end to end to form the phloem vessels. This time the cells are living. The formation of lignin in the xylem causes those cells to die eventually, so they are just dead cells, whereas phloem vessels are made of living cells, but the cells have reduced cytoplasm, no nucleus, and very few organelles. So the job of the phloem is to transport sugars and also other substances, dissolved substances like amino acids that are made from the products of photosynthesis, and to transport them from the leaves to everywhere else in the plant. The cells are living, but because they've got no nucleus and really reduced cytoplasm and no subcellular structures like mitochondria, they actually need something called a companion cell. So each sieve tube vessel or phloem specialised cell has a companion cell next door. And these companion cells have the nucleus and the mitochondria and carry out all of those living processes that the phloem vessels can't actually carry out but it provides the energy from respiration to do things like active transport and other things that the flow and vessels can't do without their help. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>